In this video, we're gonna talk about Microsoft Teams and all the fantastic features that it has that can benefit your business. But before we start, don't forget to like this video. And if you've got any comments, please put them in the comment box below. Perhaps you just started using Teams, perhaps you love Teams, or maybe you hate Teams. Just use the comment box below. So why is Microsoft Teams one of the fastest growing software packages of all time? Well, let's backtrack a little bit. I know for me personally, Outlook is the center of my universe. It acts as a kind of to-do list. Then I've got my calendar that has all my scheduled appointments. But we also use different applications in our business. We use WhatsApp for messaging. We might use Zoom for video conferencing. And then we've got a VoIP cloud-based telephone system that we use for telephone calls. Well, step forward Microsoft Teams because it includes all these features into one nice collaboration package. And that is why it's become so popular. So how can your business get access to Teams? Well, Teams is available with all the business packages of Microsoft 365, formerly known as Office 365. Unfortunately, Teams isn't available as a standalone product, so you can't just buy Teams on its own. And Teams isn't available with family or personal packages of Microsoft 365. At the very heart of this software package is something called Teams and Channels. So what is a team? What is a channel and how do they differ? Well, a team is a group of people with a common purpose. So let's think about that for a second in our own businesses. A team could be a department within your business. So you might choose to give the finance department their own team. So everyone who is a part of the finance department would be a part of the finance team. You could give the marketing department a team. And likewise, everyone from that department would also be in that team. Or a team within your business could be a specific project that you're working on. So everyone who is responsible for delivering that project would be part of that team. Or maybe as we use it, each different client that we service has its own team and everyone within our business that is responsible for servicing that client is part of that team. The one thing to remember is it's a bit of a blank canvas and you can design it however you wish. Now within Teams, there is something called channels and you can have multiple channels in every team. So what is a channel? Well, a channel is a topic of conversation within a team. So let's go back to the example of having a team for our finance department. You could have a channel within that team called accounts payable. You could have a channel called accounts receivable. You could have another channel called quotes, and another channel called purchase orders. And then you can easily segregate all the conversations within that particular channel. Does that make sense? So my top tip when it comes to designing teams and channels for your business, and that is don't overthink it. Don't spend weeks designing what teams and channels that your business needs before actually using the software. What we found with our customers is that the teams and the channels just evolve over time. So just get started using teams. So we've talked about teams and we've talked about channels. Now's the time to delve a little bit deeper. What happens within these channels? Well, the first thing is posts, or as I like to call them, conversations, because that's what they really are. Let's go back to our example of our finance department having its own team within our business. And we've got a channel within that team called quotes. Now, if I want to strike up a conversation about a quote that our business is working on, I can post that conversation within the quotes channel. And then everyone who has permissions for that channel can reply and we can strike up a conversation. Now, this is fantastic if we're working remotely. And it's also great if I'm offline because then I can log in later and catch up with the conversation. I find this way of working saves a lot of time sitting in endless meetings. And the conversations part of Teams isn't just a basic messaging system. It's a real rich text editor. You can have headings, you can have tables, you can highlight things, you can have bold, italic, underline, so you can really drill your point across to your fellow team members. Now let's talk about something called mentions. Now if you think about when you sat in a meeting with lots of people, there are times when you might want to talk to someone directly. You're not always talking to the whole group. You might say something like, Jim, what do you think about that? This feature in Teams is called mentions. 
So even within a conversation involving multiple people, you can just type the email at sign followed by the person's name and then that person will get a big red mark in their team to indicate that they've been mentioned. Again, if they're offline, they can just go to the activity feed later on and see all the times that they've been mentioned. They can quickly catch up on the conversations of the day. For me, one of the best features of Microsoft Teams is the file section. Now, how do you store your company files and folders today? Perhaps they're on a server in the office or maybe in Dropbox, or maybe you've already moved your files and folders to Office 365. Either way, Microsoft Teams will be fantastic for you. When you create a team, a new SharePoint site in Office 365 is automatically created. So you can access all your files and folders for your business without ever leaving Microsoft Teams. You can create new folders, you can create new Word, Excel documents, you can collaborate on documents with people in different locations, all without leaving the software. How fantastic is that? Plus, because these files and folders are actually in SharePoint, then you benefit from all the security that SharePoint offers, like file revision, so you can easily get back an old file without even contacting IT. So if you've not yet moved your files and folders to Office 365, now is a fantastic time to do so. Now let's talk about wikis. So when you create a team, something called a wiki is automatically created. Now you can rename this, you don't always have to call it a wiki. But what is a wiki? Well, a wiki is like a digital notebook. If you think about something like Evernote or OneNote, it's the same kind of thing. So how would we use a wiki within our business? Well, let's go back to that fictitious finance team that we have in our business. You could have a wiki with a list of all the purchase orders that are currently outstanding. You could have a wiki with some how-tos, so how do you create a quote, how do you create a purchase order, so members of that team can quickly reference how-to documents. For me, a wiki is a kind of a middle ground between a conversation and a file in SharePoint. It's some static information that people can reference quickly and easily. Now we're going to talk about the chat function of Microsoft Teams, which may confuse some people. Have we not already discussed posts and conversations? Well, no, what we talked about is the conversations that happen within a team. Now, a conversation within a team is not entirely private. Anyone who has access to that team can see the conversation. What's more, if we give someone permission to that channel six months down the line, they can see all the conversations that have happened in the past. Sometimes within our business, we want a private conversation with one or a group of people. So for this, we would use the chat function. You might just want to ask a colleague what they're doing for lunch. Again, you wouldn't put this in a conversation in a channel, you'd just send them a quick chat. So that is what the chat function is used for. So what other features does Teams have? Well, what about video conferencing? It's great to have virtual meetings with our colleagues if we're working remotely or we're based in different parts of the country or different parts of the world. It can save a load of money on travel expenses. Right now in Teams, you can have up to 250 participants in each meeting. That should be enough, right? And once you're in a meeting, there are some great features. Firstly, you can turn your webcam on or off. This is great if you're working from home sat in your pyjamas. You might not want all your colleagues to see. You can also share your computer screen. This is fantastic to do presentations to your colleagues. One of the best features about meetings for me is the ability to record it. So you could have a full virtual team meeting with all your business and you could record it and refer back to it later. I think this is a fantastic feature. And what about the feature of being able to blur your background? This is great. You might be sat in a coffee shop and you might not want people to see exactly where you are. So you can blur your background so only your face is visible. Another fantastic feature of meetings. Now we've discussed a lot of features that can drastically improve the way your business communicates. But there's one more thing. Microsoft Teams can replace your entire telephone system. So how is your telephone system set up for your business today? Maybe you've got a big clunky telephone system in your office. 
or maybe you're already using kind of a cloud-based telephone system where well, you can replace both those things and use Microsoft Teams as your telephone system. It's easy to import your existing telephone number so you don't have to start all over again. And once your telephone system is in Teams, you've got a couple of options. You can give everyone a USB headset like this, or if you prefer to have these physical phones on your desks, then suppliers are now making telephones that are specifically designed for Microsoft Teams. This really is the future of business collaboration. Now, I hope that's been a useful intro to Microsoft Teams. I hope you can see how it can take your business to the next level. If you've liked this video, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And I'll see you again in the next video.